Oh, hello everyone. I'm Amy, the brand ambassador of Crystal Wines. Thank you for joining us in this highly sought after Chateau Belen Monage virtual tasting. We are full house on this one with uh, quite a lot on the wait list. So, well, count yourself lucky. Actually, Adua, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, females on the wait list. Hint, hint. Uh, so anyway, uh, before we begin the presentation, some very quick SOP, especially to new participants. I see quite a few um, new names here. We have muted everyone to reduce background noise. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the group chat. Or you could also PM me to unmute you if you would like to ask the questions verbally. Uh, this session, we try to make it as interactive as possible. So feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, so we, we try not to push all the questions uh, to the back uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, that's about it. Uh, without further ado, I, I shall pass the rest of the presentation to the general manager of Chateau Belamonach, Edouard Mouex, who needs no introduction. Thank you very much. Good, good morning for me, everyone. Good afternoon for you. Uh, um, it's very rare that I have an excuse to actually drink wine at 9 a.m., so I'm very excited. It's a good start of, for, the, for, the, for a pre weekend. Um, the, thank you as well to all the team of, of Crystal Wine to, uh, to, uh, uh, to organize this, this re remote tasting. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, we've been missing uh, the, the contact with, with the customers for, for so many months now. And, uh, and, and at least uh, we, we, can, uh, uh, we can at least uh, uh, at, you know, see, see one another uh, uh, through, through those, those channels. Um, so today we will uh, concentrate on the property of Chateau Belermonange, which is uh, uh, um, a property which is extremely dear to our heart, uh, to my heart personally, because it's my house, that's where I live with my family. Um, and so I, I, I breathe a Belermonange every second of, uh, of my life. Um, and, uh, at, but at the same time, it's... Um, it's it's been a, a, a big project for 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 all of us in the in the company and in the family uh, uh, because we 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 own Belermonange only since two thousand and eight um, and there's a, a huge amount of work that has been done on this vineyard which which is one of the best terroirs of Saint Emilion for sure uh, as we will see later many years ago uh, it was considered as the best of the best. Um, and it went slightly dormant for, for a little while. Um, and so we made sure to, uh, uh, to, to revive this vineyard, starting with a change of name, because the vineyard's original name is Bel Air, simply Bel Air. Um, but we wanted to, to, to mark the, the change of, uh, of, of not only ownership, because that's not what, what's important, but a, a managerial approach. Um, and, uh, and, and as well, the name Monange is the maiden name of my great-grandmother, so it goes back quite a while. Um, but it's the first woman of the family uh, to, to, to arrive in saint emilion in 1931 uh, with my great-grandfather Jean Moex. They settled in a beautiful little property called Chateau Fonroc. Um, and, and this is how our... Uh, uh, um, our, our uh, uh, um, life in the wine environment started. Uh, maybe we can change the, the, the slide. Um, so you know where is Saint-Emilion. Uh, it's, it's on the, the east part of the appellation of, of, uh, of, of, um, of Bordeaux. So it's, it's the little uh, heart shape, uh, pink heart shape, where you have uh, uh, Pomerol, Saint-Emilion, Fronsac. Um, so the main appellations of the right bank. And what's interesting, I will go back to what I was saying before. Uh, what's interesting is uh, um, we are further away from the ocean uh, than the Medoc. So we, we enjoy both uh, the, the, um, an oceanic climate and a continental climate. So we have a very different climate uh, uh, than, than saint Estef, for example, which is over 100 kilometers away from here. Um, it's something that people have a hard time imagining, um, but when I drive to Montrose, for example, uh, uh, it's, it takes me an hour and a half. It's, it's, uh, it's slightly over 100 kilometers. Um, so there's, there's a proper distance between, between the right bank 
and the, the north of the, of the left bank. Uh, so if we can move to the next slide. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm the third generation of the family. So my, my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother arrived in 31, but it's my grandfather, Jean-Pierre Moix, on the left, uh, who started the wine merchant company in 1937. Um, and uh, he started by selling the wine of his parents, of the neighbors, uh, um, and mainly uh, distributing wine in the northern part of France and Belgium, uh, um, and doing the, what were, were doing a lot of merchants at the time, going door to door, uh, you know, taking the train to Brussels and uh, going door to door, trying to sell a, a few bottles here and there. Uh, um, and that's how the, everything started. He, he developed his, his business qu quite, quite quickly. And um, starting in uh, uh, 1950, he started to invest in vineyards. So he bought, uh, he purchased Chateau Lafleur Petrus in 1950, Chateau Magdalene uh, in 1952, Chateau Trotanois in 1953, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, um, purchased also a, a, a well-known property called Chateau Petrus in the 60s, um, and, and kept on, on developing his business. My father, who's in the, in the, in the middle, um, joined the company in 1970 um, after stu studying both agronomy and oenology um, and really concentrated on the, the production uh, uh, of, of all the vineyards of the family um, and, uh, and later on joined the, 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 the wine merchant company and kept on developing the, uh, uh, mainly the, the, the vineyard parts of, uh, of, the, of, of, of the family uh, um, with investments at the time in Fronsac, which we, we don't have in, anymore, uh, but as well properties like Osana, which, which is a beautiful Pomerol, uh, uh, like Providence, et, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and of course, Bel Air in 2008. And uh, um, I joined the, the company in 2003 after having traveled uh, the, the, the world um, uh, with experiences both in Asia, based in Japan and in, in California and the United States in general. Um, and I, I've been concentrating on the, uh, at the beginning on the wine merchant part, exactly the opposite as what my father had done. And, I, and I've, I've been uh, joining the, 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 the production side uh, about 12, 15 years ago. Uh, uh, and now with my father, we, we run that, that part to, to, uh, together. Voilà, so we, maybe we can move to the next slide. Voilà, so that's the, the history of, um, of Belair Monange. It just says that it's a very, uh, a, a very old uh, property. I mean, I just started in 1752, but of course the vineyard exists uh, since the Roman times. Um, and uh, we will see through its location, it makes total sense. But just to prove you that, that it has been a historical vineyard um, is the first bottling at the Chateau was 1802. Uh, I don't know if you realize, but uh, uh, it's, it's 198 years ago uh, that the, the Chateau was so well known when everybody was selling wine in barrels in bulk. Uh, the Chateau was so well known that the, the owners at the time decided to Chateau bottle the wine and to sell it bottle per bottle. Uh, and they and they 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 did that because the demand was very high. So so they could they could limit the the the, the volume of sales in in order to serve all 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 the demand. And and that's a key point because I'm sure you are passionate about wine and you've read about uh, the full Chateau bottling of, of, of Chateau Mouton uh, um, in, in, in the 1930s. Uh, um, for us, it was 130 years before. Um, so it, it really shows the, the, the recognition of, of this vineyard. And then in the 20th century, little by little, it, it went uh, uh, slightly dormant, mainly because of the situation of the vineyard, which is on limestone. And which, when we say limestone, it means quarries, stone extraction. 
And at the end of the 20th century, of, of the 19th century, there, there, at the time of the of the economic boom, uh, the industrial re uh, revolution in in France. The cities needed a lot of stone because they, they, they were expanding and therefore the construction was, was a key element. And there was an over extraction of limestone uh, in Saint-Emilion and Belermonange being the highest point of the plateau. Uh, um, uh, so uh, a, a, a big interest in the quarries that were below the vineyard and that weakened the vineyard. Um, and we needed to, to be able to find a technology, which uh, is something that we have done, um, to reinforce those quarries before being able to replant the vineyard. So when we purchased in 2008, we had vines that were over 100 years old. The oldest vine had been planted in, in 1897. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, it's absolutely fascinating. But the reason why it was still there, it's because uh, uh, um, they could not uh, pull out those vines because the soil was too weak and, and they, everything could have collapsed. Um, so it was great luck for us because it, we, we, we took advantage of those extremely old vines to do what we call a massal selection. Uh, massal selection, when you, when you replant a parcel, you have two possibilities. One possibility, which is quite classic, you go to the, the, the shop and you buy some clones, uh, so some commercial clones. Uh, uh, the other possibility is uh, um, you take, before pulling out the, 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 the previous vines, you take samples of those vines that you will then develop and replant the same gene uh, uh, genetic ma uh, uh, material. So this is what we did. But it's quite boring. I can see a few people uh, already starting to drink. Um, so uh, the next slide, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Can, can we go to, to the next slide? Oh, that's, well, uh, um, that, that, that's the next slide, okay. So that's that's the vineyard. Maybe we, we can move to Oroc Blancan uh, uh, first and, and so we can, um, voila. Um, so the, the, the first wine we have uh, uh, is called Oroc Blancan. So we have three wines on this property. Um, the vineyard is quite large because uh, as you can see, it's 23.5 hectares, which is a, a big vineyard for a first growth of Saint-Emilion. Um, and with completely different sorts of, of soil, which is quite interesting. We have the highest point of the plateau, which is a, a, a pure limestone, 88 meters high, beautiful uh, wind all the time, the name Bel Air, beautiful air. Um, so it's a location which is unique because that, that air will, will control the temperature and we never f suffer from uh, extreme heat, nor extreme uh, uh, frost. So it's a vineyard that doesn't freeze. Uh, hence the very old vines that were way over a hundred year, uh, years old when, when, when we, we purchased the, the vineyard because the big frost of 1956 in Bordeaux did not uh, damage the vineyard of, of Bel Air. And then we have the south facing slopes, which you can see on, on, the, on, on the picture here, beautiful terraces and, and slopes. Uh, um, overlooking the, the, the Dordogne Valley. Um, this is the view I have from my house. Um, and and uh, uh, the, the valley is eight kilometers wide. And so it, it, has, it, it takes advantage of, of that beautiful sun all day long. That picture was taken uh, at eight in the evening in the summer, just to give you an idea of the amount of light that the vines and therefore the fruit will take advantage of. And Oroc Blancan, it's, it, it's produced with, with vines that, that are on just at the, uh, um, the, 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 the feet of those, of those terraces. Uh, um, and so uh, soils which are a little more draining um, and with, with uh, that beautiful amount of sun. So it, it, it produces very fruit forward wines. Um, so this is the vintage 2016, which was a, a difficult vintage because uh, uh, difficult in a sense where the, the, the summer was, was very hot and dry. So it produced wines with great density. Uh, um, so uh, 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 we, we had to pay attention to, 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 to put the charm forward because, uh, of course, wine is about drinking. Wine is not about tasting. And if there is no charm, 
you spit and you don't drink. Uh, uh, if there's charm, you you drink. So it's it's for us, it's key. The more you drink, the happier we are. And we will produce wine next year. So don't worry if there's no more. There's always more coming. So today we are not supposed to spit, right, Edouard? <laughs> not even me and it's 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, so as, as you can see, we, we can taste the, the structure of, of the wine. Um, oh, yes, I'm sure you have a beautiful view from, from, from your house as well. But it's true that the countryside in France is, is quite beautiful. Um, so uh, as you can see in this wine, there, there, there's, a, there's a tannic structure which is quite present, but it's not overwhelming tannins. Um, what I mean by overwhelming tannins, there's a, there's a journalist that lives in Singapore who uh, I, I, I like very much, it's Po Tiong. Um, and I don't know if you know him, he's a very nice guy. Um, and Po Tiong was, was always against those highly extracted wines that, that, that would be drying your, your mouth. He, he used to call that the, 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 the vacuum cleaner type of wine, where it, you know, if, when you would put the wine in, in, in your mouth, it would suck your saliva, it would stick your cheeks to your teeth terrible feeling and clearly it doesn't make you thirsty. But tannins are important, but it's a question of shape of tannins. And as you can see, the, the tannins in this wine are, are, are present, you can, but you can, uh, uh, you taste them through the, the, the aromas of the, well, actually the taste. There's the, that has their nuts elements. Uh, um, which, which doesn't come from, from the oak barrel, it comes from the tannins that we extracted from the skin of, 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 of the berries. Um, and it's those beautiful round tannins, tannins. And when they are ripe, like in, in 2016, because we were lucky to have a, a beautiful uh, uh, summer and uh, uh, month of September, uh, and late harvest, so we could we could wait for the for 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 that maturity. We 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 had the luxury of patience, um, and and so we reached a beautiful maturity of of the tannins, and 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 the the, the test is always that taste of of hazelnuts. Um, and then around the wine, there's a, there's a beautiful fruit. Uh, we are more on, on, I mean, it's a mix of, of red and, 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 and black fruits. Uh, um, um, but the, 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 the balance of the wine is, is lighter uh, to, to make it more approachable in, in its youth. It's a wine that uh, clearly uh, we, we can drink right now. Um, and and there's, there's an element which is, one of the signature of this vineyard, uh, it's the minerality. And minerality is a complex word because uh, it, it's probably the widest uh, uh, um, uh, sort of range of, of taste in, in a definition. To throw minerality, it's easy. Uh, but what type of minerality? Is it the silex that we get from Alsace? Uh, um, it, you see, is it the 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 the, the gravel that, that that we get from Pomol or from from the Medoc? Uh, um, no, this time it's the limestone. So it's it's that taste uh, um, that that almost chalky taste, but but which which will bring a, a freshness in the wine and uh, an elegancy, a feminine a fem feminine touch to, to the wine, which is extremely important because that, that, that's what will make you thirsty. The big difference between a fruit juice and wine, a fruit juice, you have everything on the front of the palate and, and then there is nothing. Uh, uh, where a, a well-built, well-balanced wine, you will have a, a, a nice attack. And, and then there's a story that is being told by the wine. And we will see later with Belair Monange, uh, um, it's, it's a very different story because uh, Auroque Blancon, it's quite a linear, a linear story. It's a very pretty, delicate story. It's a, it, it, it wakes up your, your, your tasting buds and, and, and you want to drink it. It's a difficult wine to spit. Uh, um, and uh, uh, but when we get to, to wines with more uh, grandeur, uh, with more greatness, there's an acceleration uh, on, on the palate, and, and that's when the, the story becomes much more complex and, in a sense, much more in interesting. But uh, um, it's key as well to, to be able to, to express uh, the, the, the terroir of, of, of a given vineyard 
through those other wines which, uh, uh, which are full of quality, uh, but with their own character. Um, and you know when uh, uh, when you when you have kids, uh, all your kids are, are, are not are not identical and are not built for for, for the same uh, for the same things. Uh, um, and it's a little bit the same the, the same for on, on on a vineyard. There are parcels, not always the same parcels, on a given vintage that will develop that will put forward a certain style that will be approachable younger that will be lighter that will be more on the fruit more more on the on the freshness and and that's then our job to 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 uh, identify the core style of a parcel on a given vintage uh, um, and and then uh, uh, direct that parcel uh, uh, towards this or that label um, and it will it's actually more interesting for annonce and Bellamonange because we have two vintages uh, uh, very different vintages, uh, uh, even if they were produced one after the other, um, and uh, um, and then you you will be able to to see the the true di the difference. And but that's that's because of that that was done through the style of the parcel. It's extremely important. Again, in our mind, it's the drinkability which is the key. So Aurore Blancan, personally, that's a wine I drink all the time. Uh, um, it's, uh, uh, we're lucky to have a, a few vineyards uh, in our portfolio and uh, um, when I come home, uh, uh, the, the, the easiest wine I, I, I will pull out from, from my Euro cave, it's, it's a bottle of Oroch Blancan and, uh, and, and I know that uh, uh, I have a sip and whew, uh, finally you can breathe and leave uh, uh, the, the problems of, of of the day be behind you, um, and and that's the that's the, the beauty of this wine. It's 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 a generous uh, wine. It's not it's not trying to tell you uh, 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 amazing stories. It's just there to to reconfort you. It's almost a comfort wine. It, it's it's a good comfort wine, huh? but. Uh, Good one, yeah. It's uh, not and not that, that kind of complex wines that require you to think. It's just pleasure, easy it's drinking, pure pleasure. yeah, freshness and, is there, minerality. But no as you can see, uh, I mean, I have opened all all the bottles at eight a.m. So, um, uh, uh, sorry. An hour and a half ago, uh, um, and the the Oroch Blanc, but I I I lowered the, the the wine by just just mid shoulder, just so it could breathe a little bit. And between the time I poured it in my glass and and the first sip, and now the wine has completely changed. It has gained in flesh. Uh, it has gained in generosity. So it, we we need to let the wines breathe a little bit. Um, and this is where I'm personally a pro decantation. Uh, I decant everything at home. At home, uh, sometimes I even double decant. Well, just to give you an example, last yesterday was uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, my, my wife, and therefore my kids, are, are American, um, and so we we had a, a nice Thanksgiving uh, 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 dinner. Um, and I served a bottle of Dominus, which is our property in California, uh, uh, Dominus 2002, which is a vintage I, I really enjoy at the moment. It has both the, the strength and the, the, the complexity of, of its age. Um, and and, and it, it's a bottle that I, uh, um, I, I, I decanted two hours before, before serving it. Um, uh, but uh, uh, last week I served the Dominus 09, um, and, and which, which needed a, a little more aeration. So I double decanted the, the wine, so in the decanter and back in the bottle. That's something that I, I do quite regularly. Um, so, so the wine can really enjoy a, a proper breath of fresh air in order to then find its balance. Aeration is key. And everything we do around wine uh, um, is turns around the aeration, uh, um, whether it's first decanting the wine, whether it's turning the the, the, the wine in, in 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 your glass, or it, you know if all of that is done to increase the surface of breathing of the wine, uh, uh, and therefore to 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 uh, oxidize the wine before you you drink it in order to to open all the little locks uh, uh, that that the wine has. And aging, of course, is about is about breathing. Uh, uh, it's 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 key. 
And that's the, the an, an element uh, which is important for, I'm sure you remember uh, the, the wines of the, the early 2000, uh, especially in Bordeaux, where it was about extraction and microbulage, uh, uh, microbulage, microbulage. Uh, um, and the, the idea of microbulage was uh, an, uh, to force the aeration of the wine in the barrel in order to accelerate the aging of the wine and make it more ready when you would open the bottle. The only problem of that is re we realized uh, uh, um, that the, the wine then was not aging pro uh, uh, properly in the bottle and was collapsing after a few years, which of course is, is, was, is, was not an, an answer. Um, so if we go back to, uh, to the vineyard of, of, of Bela Monange, um, so th these are the three wines. If we go back up to the map, voila. So we, we have, uh, um, and, and maybe we can pour the, the Anon 16 at uh, the same time. Um, so here you have in green, um, the vineyard of Bela Monange. Um, the, 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 the green part with all the houses, uh, it's not a part of the property. It's actually the village of, of saint Emilion. Right next to it, uh, um, the, 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 the parcel that, that is uh, right where the arrow is, that's the highest point of the limestone terrace. And on each side, you have, uh, um, so on the right, you have Chateau Ozone, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, and, and then on the left, you have Chateau Canon. Uh, um, but when you when you come and maybe you have been to Saint Emilion, but please I invite you to come and see us. Uh, uh, you will see the the the, the big difference uh, uh, between those 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 vineyards and and the, the core of, of our parcel here. Um, and and so uh, 88 meters um, with uh, uh, with a gentle slope on on each side, which allows the water to be naturally drained. Plus the limestone has a beautiful effect of retaining. That, that, that water and giving it back to the vine in the summer if, if needed. Uh, um, and it depends on the, le the, the level of the barometer. So all of that is natural. It has nothing to do with us. Uh, um, and that gentle wind with, which always brings a certain freshness to, 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 to the vine and, and, and they don't go under stress. Um, and it's, it's especially important in the recent years because with global warming, which is a reality, uh, even if some people uh, try to, to make us think that it's not true, uh, I can tell you that in agriculture in general, we are fully aware and, 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 and uh, uh, spectators of, of global warming. Um, with those very dry and hot summers that we've had for the last few years, uh, um, the fact to be in that environment, which is always gently brushed with, with, with the wind and the limestone, which retains the humidity, uh, um, uh, uh, helps tremendously because um, it's, it allows us not to go into over maturity while reaching the right level of maturity. Because the problem of the high stress due to heat and, 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 and drought will be that the vine will block itself. So there's two possibilities. Tease, sorry. Either it's, it's, a, it's a stress that the vine can take, but it will accelerate the maturity of, of the fruit and, and you will fall into over maturity. So those prune notes, uh, uh, heavy wines, lacking acidity and no charm whatsoever. Uh, or if the stress is stronger than that, is, uh, uh, then uh, the vine will completely block. And it's a fascinating thing to, to see. Uh, the, the vine, all of a sudden, in, in the middle of the afternoon, when it has had too much sun for, for, for the day, the leaves turn. Uh, uh, of course, they don't turn like that, uh, but, the, but the, uh, the, the leaf will then sort of close up a little bit like um, a nénuphar. Uh, 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 I forgot the name of that plant in, in English, sorry. Uh, but so, so the, the, the leaf will, will sort of close slightly on itself and the vineyard that was green turns slightly gray because you know, the, 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 the bottom of, of a vine leaf is, is slightly hairy uh, and those little hair are, are, are whitish gray. And so uh, um, all of a sudden that's, that's the color that will dominate your vineyard. And it's fascinating to see when, when the sun is almost at its peak and it's hot and, and shloom, the, 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 the color of the vineyard changes. And that's a, a, a protection of the vine. And while it does that, it blocks its maturity. And then you will have uh, you, you will have wines which will lack color, which will lack concentration, uh, 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 because it was too hot 
um, which which is which is hard to imagine uh, because uh, uh, sun means quality for us by definition. Um, so so that's why that 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 vineyard is 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 so important. And then the the, the band that is just just below that long band uh, between plateau and terraces, the picture we we we, we saw uh, uh, early on. Um, there's 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 a little more clay, blue clay, the same clay as we have in Pomol. Uh, that that uh, um, will will allow the vine to grow its root system slightly deeper, uh, uh, and therefore to resist that amount of light because since it's uh, it's it's facing south uh, um, the, the, the 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 those vines see the sun from from the the the, the very morning until the the the, uh, the end of the day and so those 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 parcels are, are bathing in sun it's it's absolutely beautiful um, and and it and the the the, the the vines, thanks to the, those very rich soil, which retain humidity and allow that root system to go deep and therefore to, 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 to allow them to, to be stronger, uh, um, we, uh, we, we get a fruit there that is much deeper. So we have the elegancy from the plateau, the, the, the femininity, as we say, uh, uh, and then you have the depth, uh, uh, the, the power, the richness that comes from, from, from those slopes. Um, which is unique in, in Saint-Emilion because in Saint-Emilion, within all the premier Grand Cru Classé, the first growth of Saint-Emilion, you are either on the plateau or on the slopes. Clos-Forté, uh, 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 Canon, uh, 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 the Beau Séjour are on the plateau. Uh, 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 Ozone is on the slopes but facing west only. Uh, it's, as I said, that little triangle on the right of, of our vineyard. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, Pavi, for example, Gaffelière are purely on, on the south facing slopes. Canon Gaffelière, Larcis du Casse, all are purely on the slopes and not on the plateau. And Belair Monange is the only vineyard to, to marry both the plateau and the slope. So we gain by, the, by blending those, those two types of soils, we gain in, com we gain in complexity and, 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 poten and, and, and potentially greatness. And consistency as well, maybe vintage over vintage because you have more different plots to play with. So the blending, you can play with the blending to create more consistency. Vintage it's, vintage. It's, it's, exact, it's exactly true. Um, and clearly on a, on a warmer, drier vintage, the, 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 the percentage of plateau will be greater than on a fresher vintage. Because on a cool vintage, the plateau is cool. Uh, and so uh, we, 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 um, it, it's more difficult to reach uh, the perfect level of maturity. Uh, but then we have those south facing slopes that bathe in sun and therefore heat, uh, um, and, and these will reach ma uh, maturity. Um, but but we, we, uh, um, the, the date of harvest can vary tremendously. Uh, uh, we can have two weeks between the harvest of, of the slopes and the harvest of the plateau. Uh, um, and, and, but we, we are lucky to be able to adapt. Everything is done by hand, of course, uh, uh, and we, we adapt to each, uh, uh, to each uh, uh, vintage uh, and to each type, type of soil. It makes it slightly more, more complicated, but luckily enough, we have quite a few vineyards in Pomerol as well. So we have a team of harvesters of 120 people. Um, so when, when we harvest, uh, uh, when we decide to harvest a parcel, uh, we, 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 have, we don't have time to breathe that it's done. Uh, uh, you, for you to imagine, 120 people, extremely well trained, and our, and our vineyards are pristine, so uh, uh, it's, it's easy, they don't have to remove leaves and etc. Um, we can go up this year, we, we bet a record, we harvested over, over 11 hectares by hand in one day. Um, a machine, um, those, you see those huge, ugly machines, uh, very convenient uh, because much cheaper. Um, a machine uh, harvests four hectares per day, um, just to give you a, a scale. So it's tremendous, but it's great because when it's ready, paf, we go. 
and we can harvest uh, uh, in the morning Beller Monange and in the afternoon La Fleur Petrus or Ozana or Trotanois or start in Trotanois, go in Beller Monange and then finish in Ozana. And so we don't harvest per vineyard, we harvest per parcel. So we gained in, in precision. And, and I think the evolution of, of winemaking since the last 15 years, the revolution, because it's, it's really almost a revolution, is the, the, the gain in precision. Before, 15 years ago, we would start the harvest on the right, finish on the left, and move to the next vineyard. Uh, um, and uh, and it, was, it, was, uh, uh, it, we, it was sort of a, a big broom that broom was, was cleaning everything. Um, where, where, where nowadays, we, we are cherry pickers. Um, we're, we're like little, uh, little roosters, typical French, uh, um, and clack, 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 we were pecking, you know. Uh, um, it, 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 it means a, a huge organization because unlike the bigger vineyards in the Medoc, we have multiple cellars because we don't put all the fruit in the same cellars, of course. Uh, uh, so when we, when we change vineyards, when we change parcel, we change sellers, we change everything. So it's a big organization, uh, uh, but it, the, the gain in, in quality uh, is, is worth every effort, every effort. And which allows us as well to have those three levels of, uh, three le uh, uh, levels of wine on, on, on a property of 23.5 hectares, which, uh, uh, which, which then uh, uh, pulls the quality of each wine higher. So the next one is, is uh, Annonce. Um, so you, you, you realize that Aurore Blancan Annonce doesn't carry the name Chateau. So here that on that slide, we see the limestone and the blue clay. Sorry, the previous one. So you see the, the limestone on, on the left, so pure stone, uh, so the, the, the roots cannot go through, and the blue clay that we have on the slope. When we say blue clay, as you can see, I'm not lying. Uh, it's a very thick clay. It's a, beautiful clay, uh, which, which, which uh, uh, couldn't be more different from the, the orange clay that we know everywhere, that you have a lot in Singapore, uh, um, which, which, uh, uh, which is not qualitative for, for farming because it's too rich. The beauty of that blue clay is that it, it, it's quite poor, so nothing really grows in it, and, uh, except for vines. Vines are extremely resilient. Uh, um, and, and by stressing the vine, we produce better wine. But the stress doesn't come from us, the, the stress comes from the, the environment, the terroir. So uh, an annonce as a Blancan doesn't have the term chateau because in, in Bordeaux, uh, you can only have one chateau per vineyard. Um, and so uh, when you have other labels on this vineyard, you have to find other names. Um, sometimes the names are not very good, uh, uh, sometimes they are, um, but uh, as you can see, if you take uh, uh, Caruat de Lafitte, it's not Château Caruat de Lafitte. Uh, if you take Pavillon Rouge, it's not Château Pavillon Rouge. So it's, it's, a, it's a very important element. Um, but then uh, um, the, the Château means also, it doesn't mean that we live in castles, Lafitte and Margot. Yes, not me. I have a pretty house, but it's not a castle. Uh, um, it's, uh, uh, Château means that the fruit comes from one given vineyard every year. Uh, um, Unlike the, what we would call the generic label, so we have uh, as wine merchants uh, Jean-Pierre Moix generic, that's fruit that comes from multiple vineyards that we have blended together. Okay, so the term chateau is extremely important in, uh, in Bordeaux. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it doesn't mean that we buy fruit for Annonce and Or Blancon, not at all, we would not be allowed. But, uh, uh, but when, when it's one given vineyard, it's, it's really the expression of that specific site. And uh, uh, maybe next time we will do a, a tasting for, for, with, the, with our Pomerol property. And it's fascinating to see that chateaus that are right next to each other and much smaller, six hectares, five hectares, 12 hectares, uh, right next to each other are completely different. And, and that's the very exciting part of our job uh, uh, is, to, is to really express the terroir, putting ourselves behind the bottle. Um, you know, and that's where uh, the drinking part is important. Um, we produce wine for you. We don't produce wine for us. 
uh, 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 my ego is not there. Uh, um, my ego is in the, the fighting of the elements when it pours, when it freezes, when, it's, uh, when it hells. Uh, that's where I put my ego. Uh, um, I, I don't want to be sitting in the center of your table. Uh, um, that's that's not that's not my aim. But I I, I I want my wines to be sitting in the center of of, of, of your table and give you pleasure. Uh, uh, pleasure is is the key element. And wine is which is great is one of the very few elements nowadays in life where when you are sitting alone or with friends in front of a bottle of wine, you indulge yourself. You turn off your cell phone. Maybe you're going to take a picture to put on Instagram to tell your friends, that's what I'm drinking. But that's not where your pleasure is. Your pleasure is, is with the, the feelings you will get from, from, from the wine. Uh, um, and that's for us the most important. So how would you differentiate the 216 and 217 vintage of Anons? Hmm. Sorry. I will answer your question. As you can see, annonce very different from uh, uh, from Oro Blancan. We are entering the, the level of the very good wine. Uh, for us, annonce it's um, it's the level of a, a very good Grand Cru classé. If you look at the uh, uh, the, the classification um, and the way we produce annonce is very simple. It's the parcels on a given vintage that are almost getting into Bella Monange. You know, uh, uh, Aurore Blancan, it's a style of wine that we aim for, as you understood. And uh, if we don't get that style, we will not produce. Annonce, it's always those, those, those parcels, which uh, uh, when we work on the blend, we, we, we say, okay, that, that's, that's Bella Monange. Um, but then when we try when we do all those trials of blendings that's the element that that doesn't add anything to the blend of Bella Monange and 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 so it's just below below that level uh, um, and and that that will that that will produce annonce so you have I was talking earlier on about acceleration on the palate you have that acceleration when when you put when the wine settles on on, on your tongue all of a sudden it grows. You still have that minerality, that freshness. You have those tannins which are much more refined tannins, as you can see, uh, um, much more delicate, and they pull the wine up. Uh, um, and and for us, that's where we, we reach a proper level of a grand vin. So the big difference between 16 and 17, um, it's the spring it's the spring. The spring of 16 was um, fairly, uh, uh, fairly wet so, uh, um, and humid in general. Um, so the vines developed, um, there was a, a lot of uh, um, aggressions of mushroom because when it's humid, you know something about humidity in Singapore, uh, mushrooms grow like, like that. Um, and for, for us, mushroom, I'm not talking about sep, of course. Uh, um, I'm, I'm talking about sicknesses, uh, uh, like mildew. Mildew is a sickness, uh, it's a mushroom that attacks the, the, the vine. It's almost, we could almost call that a virus. Um, and so, so it was extremely difficult for us to, 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 to be able to bring the, 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 the vines until the end of, of, of that period, and, and the vines suffered a lot. Um, but which means as well that we had quite a lot of water uh, 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 stored in, in, in the soils, which was going to be crucial for the summer because then end of, end of June, we had a beautiful summer, very dry, extremely stressful for the vines. But since there were those water reserves in the soil, the vines never went under a pure blockage, as I was describing earlier on. Um, and uh, uh, the, the weather in September was, was very nice. We had a few showers as we always have around the 15th of September when we, when we have the, the new moon. Um, and, uh, and those showers uh, were the, the, the last uh, the, the, so sort of the, the, the last element that allowed to reach the full maturity. And then we, we picked very quickly. So, I mean, very quickly. So we harvested very late in 16. We had to be patient. As I said earlier, we had the luxury of patience. 
Um, and so we, we started the harvest on the 22nd of, 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 of September um, and we finished the harvest on the 12th of October. So late harvest, you see, uh, patience, 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 very slow maturity but no blockage whatsoever. So that beautiful construction of the tannins. Tannins is the key in Bordeaux. Bordeaux wines are built around tannins. Chilean, Argentinian wines are built around fruits. Bordeaux wines are built around tannins. Uh, so the, the definition of a good, of an average good, very good or great vintage, it's the tannins. It's the maturity of the tannins. Um, and, and by being uh, patient, we have managed to reach a beautiful maturity of the tannins, both the tannins of the skin and the tannins of the seeds. Um, and the tannins of the seeds are the most difficult because uh, they are very similar to the tannins of the oak, so they are drying tannins, unless when they are ripe, uh, uh, and, and then they, they hold the, the, all the elements together. And usually when we have uh, ripe tannins, it means that we had a beautiful warm summer, uh, and which means a lot of fruit and a lot of flesh, wider wines, richer wines. So you, when the wine is richer, you need more tannins, more core, and you need more acidity. Uh, uh, it's, it, again, it's always a question of, 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 uh, uh, of, um, of balance. So that's for the 16, which is the annonce you have and Oroch Blancan you had prior. You see the, again, you, you have that slight hazelnut element in the, on, on the side of, of your tongue in the, in, in, in the back palate, which, which is quite beautiful. Um, but you have that acceleration and it's, it's, the, it's, it's the acidity that, that, that does that. And the wine is, is vibrant, much more vibrant than Oro Blanco, uh, um, the, which was more linear, as, as I said earlier. On. So that was the 16. If we taste the 2017, up. Then 17 was the opposite of 16. The, the butt break was exactly at the same di date, 29th of March. Uh, but then we had a dry and, 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 and very sunny spring. Uh, um, dry, however, means no clouds, and no clouds means frost. When there's clouds, it doesn't freeze. Uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, except if you go in Siberia, uh, where, where the, the rain can freeze on, uh, as soon as it reaches the, 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 the ground. Uh, in Bordeaux, we're very far from Siberia. Uh, uh, so when it rains, it usually means that it's warm. Uh, and we have no snow here. The last time we had snow was in 2011, and it snowed for half a day. Um, so, uh, um, cloud means warmth. Uh, um, so when, when there is no cloud, when the weather is beautiful, when the, 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 the sky is clear, that's when we have a risk of frost. And end of April, we had, we had a fairly severe frost. I have a picture here. I don't know if you can see it properly, um, but that's, that's the, the kind of, oh, that's the kind of uh, protection we had to, uh, uh, to put together. That's in La Fleur Petrus. Um, and so we, we had to put candles uh, throughout all the parcels of course, in Pomol, because as I, as I told you before, Bel Air doesn't freeze, but in Pomol, we, we had to protect all our parcels with candles. It's, it's big candles, like as big as a, as a paint pot. Um, and, and so it's every three rows, every six meters. So, so it's, it's a heavy uh, 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 sort of grill that we put together and it brings the temperature up by about four to five degrees. So it makes a big difference. Uh, uh, it's like having a fire in your fireplace, in a sense, uh, uh, without burning the vine, of course. Um, and, um, and, and so th that's, that, that was on the night of the 26th of, of April, so late frost. And there's a lot of people that su that's, who could not protect themselves uh, the, the way we did that, that suffered from the frost. Um, but the, the, so 17, beautiful sc uh, 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 spring. And then we had a dry summer, but slightly gray, slightly overcasted. 
So the sun was not uh, per, was not perfectly uh, uh, heating the the, 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 the the vines and and so we didn't have as much fruit as much richness in the wines and we have a saying in French août fait le mou the month of August defines the must uh, and the must it's the richness um, when you have a beautiful month of August you will have a, a, a richer wine. When you have a month of August that's a little overcasted, you will have a thinner wine. So then you, when the wine is thinner, you have to be uh, careful with the skeleton of the wine. And what is the skeleton of the wine? It's the tannins. So you, you have to limit your extractions of tannins in order to adapt to the size uh, 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 of the amount of fruits that the, of flesh that, that that you will get, and that's where our, our job at the time of the vinification is extremely uh, 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 difficult, and where we have gained in precision, as I said before, because now we we, we can we can fully control uh, vat per vat, parcel half parcel, third of a parcel per third of a parcel, uh, uh, the the, uh, the 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 level of maturity and therefore the level of of, of, of extraction. I hope it's not too technical. It's so climate. Participants can absorb. So it's more approachable, which is quite interesting. The 16 was still a little tight um, and it needs more time. Uh, if you still have some Annonce 15, 2015, I recommend you to, to, to taste some. Um, I have no more. Um, we drank everything we had left. The Annonce 15 is so good at, the, at, at this time. Uh, um, uh, literally, for the, 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 the Chateau Reserve that I, I have left is four cases of six. Um, so that will take me about three weeks to drink them. Um, the, the, so it's, uh, annonce, uh, again, it's that wine which has the, the characteristic of a grand vin, yet is, is, is quite approachable. And this 17, the 16, I would wait a little, a little more. Uh, it's, it's tight, it's more discreet, it's a little closed on itself. Um, Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Yen. Um, the, 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 the 2017, as I said, which was, uh, we had to be lighter on the extractions. So there's, there's not as, as much tannins. There's a nice acidity. You don't have that, that acceleration that you have in the 16. It's a little more uh, settled as, as a wine. There's a very nice, gentle fruit. It's a very pretty wine. Uh, um, but um, exactly, uh, um, but it's uh, um, it's it's it will not uh, it will not be as good as the sixteen in three four years, for example, because it doesn't have the same uh, the, the the same material, the same uh, 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 it's not armed the, the the same way for the structure as as it was just underlined, uh, but as well for the fruit and the flesh. You see, it's, it's more uh, a delicate wine than a fleshy wine. Um, alors, uh, the, the, um, the question of Cabernet, Cabernet Franc is, is, uh, is very interesting. Um, the key for Cabernet Franc is ripeness. Um, and it's, it's, it's an, an element which we have here in, uh, in, in Saint-Emilion, but as well that, that we have in, in, in Pomerol. It's a big question. And there is a, there is a big movement on the right bank to turn, the, to turn the, uh, one's back to Merlot and to embrace Cabernet Franc, and it's, it's the new Eldorado. Um, I disagree with that. It's too fast. Uh, we cannot bury Merlot. Uh, Merlot is a difficult grape variety. It's a difficult grape variety to handle. It's a fragile grape variety. And there's very, very few places in the world where we can have great Merlot. And if there is one place in the world where we can have great Merlot, it's Pomerol and Saint-Emilion. Because we have that, those perfect climatic conditions with, as I said at the very beginning, the oceanic influence and the continental influence, and having both those influences, 
um, it's warm without uh, um, with, without being uh, um, it's warm without being sorry I, I will answer the global warming part after it's it's warm without being uh, too hot um, and therefore it's, it's it lowers the, the 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 maturing cycle of the merlot and allows it to have the the basics of merlot which is generosity which is pure pleasure flesh depth and 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 add to that complexity and therefore generosity depth and complexity that's the definition of a great wine um, we have uh, uh, in trotanois which is a great wine in petrus which is a great wine in la fleur petrus for many years which is a great wine a hundred percent merlot nobody was ever shocked by that it's only now that a few people uh, uh, who have decided to embrace Cabernet Franc in order to uh, to have a different style of wine. For me right now, it's more a question of style than a question of global warming. Um, uh, uh, we, we are right now walking out of a time that was uh, uh, fully dominated by one taste, uh, a great taste, I, I must say, as much as for many years he didn't like our wines. Uh, uh, I have a, a, a huge admiration for this man. It's Robert Parker, uh, of course. Uh, um, I've never seen a, a, someone taste so, so precisely. Fascinating. 30 to 45 seconds per wine. Blah, blah, blah. And words which 10 years later, you read the comment and you're like, well, he was right. And even if at the time you were annoyed, oh, what does it mean? Oh, he did not understand my wine, you know. Uh, no, he was right. Uh, um, but he had a style. He had a style that he liked, and many people changed their style of wine to please uh, 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 Bob Parker. Um, and so nowadays, many people are trying to reinvent their style. Uh, um, not to be accused, because it's almost a bad word nowadays, not to be accused to be parkerized. Um, and I think it's more a question of trend. And trends are extremely, extremely dangerous. So yes, it's key to, to prepare for global warming, um, but, uh, uh, but one doesn't, should not change too much its style uh, uh, just, be, just because of fashions, uh, because fashions come and go obviously. And our job, again, is to be behind the bottle and to express the style of a given vineyard. Belle Hermonange, it was, it was created uh, by the Romans. We forgot the name of all those people. We don't care. You don't care. I have many of those names because it's the history, but who cares? When you drink a bottle of Margot 1900, which is uh, one of the most fascinating bottles in, in, in Bordeaux. Is your first question, who was the winemaker? Nobody cares. It's a great wine. The guy is dead. Sorry to say it like, like that, but it's true. Uh, uh, he's long gone. He did a great job and he, he served his purpose by producing a great wine at that time. And then he's gone, moved on. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the way we approach wine. We don't want to mark wine without thumbprint. We want to express uh, 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 what, what our, our soil gives. And yes, we prepare for global warming, but we prepare by changing our approach in the vineyard and in the cellar by gaining precision, as I said, by, by protecting as much as we can nature. Uh, and again, I live on the vineyard. I don't want to poison my family nor myself. So we are extremely, and we've always been, we've, I've always lived on the vineyard. We've always been extremely protective of, of the nature and respectful of, 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 of the nature, our own environment. Uh, um, so we, we adapt, <coughs> pardon, we adapt all, all those elements to, to keep expressing the core style. Merlot is a fantastic grape variety. I mean, open a bottle of Trotanois 1990 uh, today. It will blow your mind away. On the right bank, in the Médoc, 
probably they need some Merlot, but more Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is greater. In California, when my father arrived uh, uh, on the vineyard of Napanook, uh, uh, there, there was 20% Merlot, which he pulled out within the, the first 10 years, because Merlot in California, it's too hot. So we don't gain uh, uh, complexity. We only have the fruit, and that's not a great wine. Uh, it can be very good, but it's not great. Um, so you have to know where you are and what works. Um, but it's true that on, on the, and then the problem of Cabernet Franc, it's a very, very difficult uh, grape variety to reach the right level of maturity. And I can assure you in 2017, to reach maturity with Cabernet Franc was extremely difficult because it, it, was, it was dry, but overcasted. And the harvest time in 17 was, ex was much earlier. We started the harvest, I don't want to say anything stupid, yes, we started the harvest on the 8th of September, uh, where in 16 we started in, in 20, uh, on the 22nd. That makes a massive difference, massive difference. Uh, and when you have to start the harvest that early, it, it means that the, the Merlot has reached its, its, its level of maturity because it's, it's a faster uh, uh, maturing grape variety. But then the, the, the Cabernet Franc is usually more, slightly more difficult. Then there are specific spots like Fijac, which, which are, are, uh, 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 work, uh, work extremely well with, with, with Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm, I'm, I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying our approach for us Merlot is still the king of the right bank, and we should not kill the king. We should accompany the king because that is our point of difference. You know, how many people have, have, have said that too many people, uh, too many producers outside of Bordeaux were planting too much Cabernet Sauvignon and therefore turning their back to their original, uh, um, to their original grape variety uh, and therefore style of, of region. It's the same here. Uh, um, uh, uh, you see in Italy, you see in Spain, you see in, in Argentina, people going back to the origin uh, of, of the grape varieties, the grape varieties that uh, have a sense of place in that environment. And for you, thanks to that, you can travel. You, you don't buy a, a bottle from, from Argentina for it to taste like Burgundy. If you want to taste a Burgundian wine, you buy a Burgundian bottle. Uh, um, and, and so we, we, need to, we need to stick to, our, to the identity of our, of our region. What is the ideal Cabernet Franc? What's the area uh, where Cabernet Franc is the most renowned? It's the Loire Valley, you know? It's a completely different style, much lighter in color, much, much higher acidity. Uh, the, the, the fruit is, is red, uh, it's not blue, it's not black. Uh, um, it's a completely different, uh, uh, di di different identity um, and it's a completely different style. And if, if the Loire Valley were to plant Merlot, that would make no sense because it would completely change their style of wine. However, Cabernet Franc, when it's ripe, is a great seasoning. And we have planted some Petit Verdot, which is an even later maturing grape variety on the vineyard of La Fleur Petrus. Uh, so we have Petit Verdot since 2015. Half a percent, one percent, that's, more, that's just enough. The seasoning, la petite pincée de sel, as we say. You know, when, when you do the seasoning of, uh, of, of your dish, the, the extra chak chak little, little bit of pepper or salt or paprika or, 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 or you know, uh, 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 different type of spices. That's what will make the difference. That's what will make your dish a little more exciting. Same thing for us, the key of blending. Uh, but it's not because the wine is 100% Merlot that it's not blended. There's, we blend the age of vine, we blend the type of soil, we blend the date of harvest, uh, 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 we blend all those elements. And, and a young vine doesn't taste like an old vine. The young vine, it's like the baby fat. It's pretty, it's there, it's generous, it's smiling. Uh, uh, the old vine, it's a, little more, it's a little more rough on the angles, but it has the depth, it has the, the understanding. And so when you blend those two elements together, you have a beautiful wine. So by two wines, by, by taking only the qualities of two wines which have uh, faults on, on the side, or not, not faults, but imperfections, uh, uh, you erase the imperfection and you add uh, uh, and, and you produce a better wine. One plus one equals three, four, five, depending on the greatness of the terroir. We need to move to Belermonange. 
I think. <laughs> no, everyone is engaged. Don't worry, Edward. Okay. You're all engaged. Yeah, we learned a lot today. Because it, we, we passed the time. I apologize. There's always so much to say. Ah, it's such a fascinating world. Yeah, and but the good thing is that the wines are actually well, yeah, it's breathed. So uh, the, the bouquet is really coming out for the Grand Vaughan. So good thing. Good. Yeah. So um, just for your information, I taste, I, I poured the 17 Bella Monange because therefore you can, you can have it after the 17 annonce. Alors, là, c'est différent. Ouf. Um, so, as, as, as you understood, 17 was a slightly complicated vintage. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, always, I, I'm always fascinated by this vineyard. We, we've, part of the vineyard we've owned since 1952, so needless to say that we know it uh, uh, square by per square. Um, um, part of the vineyard we, we own it since 2008. Um, the, ah, uh, you, you, you see, you have all the elements I've, I've been talking about. Uh, and you understand now why I say annonce, it's the elements that could almost have made it into Belair Monange, but we're not bringing anything to the, to, to the blend. And it's that, annonce, it's a really nice wine. It's a, it's, it's a, it, it has all the elements, but it doesn't have the greatness. I'm sorry, I'm a very bad salesperson. Uh, um, but and as I said, I, I drink annonce all the time. The 15, as soon as I like something, I'm a little bit like an ogre. Uh, um, and if, if I don't come with a good bottle of wine, my wife is uh, 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 um, gives me a, a very hard time. Uh, um, no, I, I'm kidding. But uh, um, it's actually me who gives her a very hard time. But uh, uh, the 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 um, you, you you see the 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 wines of of annonce. Uh, uh, when they're good, you should enjoy it. Yes, they can be better in three, four, five years. Doesn't matter. Uh, uh, um, it, it, you can enjoy it and, and you don't have to think twice. And, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I usually uh, uh, de define the, the, the wines of, of Annonce. Um, you don't drink them per bottle, you drink them per case. That's why I made cases of six. Uh, um, because you open a bottle, you finish the six. If you have a few friends at home, uh, you're gathering, you're looking at a sports game on the TV or just having a good time. Uh, um, the, the, no, not at all. Um, the Cabernet Franc do doesn't uh, impact the, the aging of the wine. Um, the, the, but you, it's a wine you, you just enjoy. It's for, for your pure pleasure. Belair Monange, it, uh, it calls you. You see, as soon as you, as, as you put it in your mouth, it, it broadens in every direction, in, 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 in the, the, the horizontal pleasure, the wine gains in, 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 uh, in, in broadness. Uh, uh, and then the, the, the anchorage, the, the, the announce, the, the announcement, sorry, I'm reading at the same time, uh, uh, the, 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 the depth that, 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 that you get uh, um, from, from in, in, in the wine. And then it's like a wave, announce, it's a wave that flows on, 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 on your tongue. Uh, uh, um, Belair Monange, it's a wave that rolls on your tongue. You see, it's, it's, it's massive, it's muscular, yet it gains in size. It, it's, uh, it, 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 goes, uh, um, it, it, it goes higher and higher and higher. And it, it's almost, it's, it, it almost never ends. You, you wonder when, when the wine uh, uh, will, will, will end. Um, and, and that's that beautiful story that, that, that a great wine will, will tell you. So it shouldn't take your, your attention to the environment. It shouldn't take your attention to, from, from, from your, your, your friends and family around the table. But in the back of your mind, then you're like, oh, there's something that I felt there. I want to go back to it. 
and that's when you 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 will have an, an, an another sip and that's why it's important to decant the wine but still to to let uh, a certain a certain uh, um, time to, to of evolution to the, to to the wine in the glass because to be able to go up into the the development of the wine through the, the aeration is such an excitement because of course the last sip will always be the best sip by definition when you have a very good dish the, the you, you want to sauce uh, you want to take the bread and then to to get all the very little bits that are left in your plate it's the same thing for wine so you you are there's always a slight frustration but it's key that frustration because that's what built up your 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 interest and and your your curiosity and it's 17 I'm, I'm getting a little nervous for 16, um, which obviously is uh, on, on the paper um, a greater vintage. Thank you for your comments. It's, uh, I'm not commenting all, all of them, but it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very interesting. And, and, and clearly, Annonce is much more approachable and Bel Air uh, um, has already reached a, um, a, certain, uh, um, a certain level of, uh, of price. Um, and, and thanks to you, because it's the demand that brings the price up. It's not me who decides. Um, and, um, but, and, and, and with Annonce, we're, we're trying to, to introduce uh, the, the, the Grand Vin. Hence the name. That's why I picked the name Annonce. Uh, it announces the, the Grand Vin, Annonce de Belle Um But uh, um, uh, um, it's, it, it has allowed us also to produce a better Bellarmonange, you see, because if we had put those parcels into the into the blend, Bellarmonange would not be as uh, as dreamy. It makes me dream. It doesn't mean it makes you dream, but 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 uh, um, that's that's the, that's the, the sensation I, I I have. It 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 tickles my intellect, you know. And actually, just personally, I feel like I I know people always say that second wines are more approachable. But I actually find the Grand Van very approachable. It has the flavor. In fact, for me, it has much more flavor intensity yep. than the second wine. Yeah. And the tannins are actually quite pleasant. So I, I do feel that is, the Grand Van is very approachable. Can be drank now even. I mean, for, after decanting for a while, I've, I've put it in my glass for, for the longest time, I think 30 minutes. Very nice. The bouquet is coming out. Interesting. I, I, I totally agree with you. And, uh, and, and I, uh, um, second wines are easier to approach. Uh, but today, with that uh, precision we, we have gained with the extraction, with the, the style of tannins, uh, um, you don't have to wait. And that's part of the huge work that we have done in the past, let's say, 10 years. With the change of of, uh, of way of consumption, people are not as patient as before, for for practical reasons. Uh, uh, first of all, wines are, are much more expensive. So uh, uh, when 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 you buy a bottle of wine, uh, you, you you it's much harder to forget it for twenty years. Second of all, of, of all, we don't have the same space. A seller, most of the time, uh, uh, it's 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 uh, it, it's it's a, it's the size of a fridge. Uh, um, so we're we're far away from those old sellers where you would go down uh, uh, below the house with your grandfather and uh, and and spend uh, uh, and spend hours uh, dusting off the, the bottles. These, these days are long gone. Um, so all the, all these elements forced us, pushed us, while still expressing the, 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 the terroir, the, the sense of, of place, uh, um, to, to produce wines that were more approachable. And, and their te technique and technology has helped us a lot. Uh, uh, the sorting, uh, sorting tables, optical sorting tables, allow us to, to, to put aside the one, two percent berries uh, uh, that would bring a certain greenness in the wine. And that greenness 
was forcing you to age the wine longer for it to be swallowed by 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 the tertiary aromas. Uh, um, um, you know, we make the blend down to 0.5 percent, 0.2 percent. Uh, um, so of course, two percent of, of of unripe berries makes a huge difference. Um, so it, I totally agree with you. Whether it's a grand vin or a, 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 a lighter wine, uh, um, it needs to be approachable young. However, if you age, as someone mentioned earlier on, uh, can't wait to taste those wines uh, older. Uh, uh, if you age those wines, you will get so much more. And that's, 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 the, that's the key. I, I'm going to taste the 16 right now. Yeah, and also, I guess to answer the question about Cap Franc, whether it has more ageability than Merlot, I'm actually also curious because people do say that if it's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, it definitely has more ageability than 100% Merlot. Do you agree, disagree? Okay. Totally because disagree. of the tannins, right? It's because of the tannins. The argument is that the tannins and the acidity. But there's yes. tannins and acidity in those wines. I mean, uh, um, we have um, we, we, we have wines. Um, the oldest bottle I have in my cellar is 1816, 1816. Um, and uh, so it's, it's 204 years old. I never tasted it because I only have one and uh, that would be... Uh, it's, I don't own that bottle. Uh, um, I own it on the paper, but it, I don't feel that I have the right to open that bottle. It's probably the oldest bottle still in Bordeaux. Uh, um, but I've tasted 1846, I've tasted, I've tasted 1836. Uh, um, and uh, um, the, the, from, from Bel Air, the wines are beautiful are still fresh. It's, it's mind-blowing. They need 20 minutes to open. Uh, um, and at the time, it was, the, it, it was not Cabernet. It was, it, 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 it was the, the sort of the, the, the pre-Merlot uh, uh, grape varieties, but it was Merlot. It was not Boucher, um, as, as we could find in, in some places. Boucher was, was more later in Pomerol in the, in, in, in the 60s. Boucher is the old name for Cabernet Franc. Um, but uh, um, at the same time, La Fleur Petrus, 1950, the, the first vintage produced by my grandfather. I still have a few bottles uh, here that I, I open from time to time. The wine is magnificent. It's 100% Merlot. What's wrong with that? Uh, um, the, the, the problem is Merlot is difficult. You need to work harder. It's a tough grape variety. Um, but what's wrong with that? You know, I don't have anything else to do, uh, um, especially right now. But anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> but the, the, you, it's, it's, you, you need to work harder because you need to pamper it. You need to be more attentive. Uh, um, you need to prune slightly later because it has a, tend to, to, it has a tendency to, to butt break slightly earlier. Uh, um, so you, 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 it's more sensitive to frost. But if you prune later, the butt break will, will be slightly later. Uh, um, yes, at the time of the, of, of the flowering, if, if you have a, a, a heavy ch a change of temperature, um, it, it's, it, it might suffer from poor set. But uh, um, um, poor set uh, um, actually is, is, a, is, is a first, um, is a first uh, uh, um, green harvest. So it's, it eliminates <coughs> the extra berries that could have diluted the, uh, the wine. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I talk too much. So uh, um, it's it's just um, it's it, it 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 demands more effort. It demands more attention. But when you have something uh, a great Merlot, it's mind blowing. <clears throat> the question of alcohol is is a very good question, and that's the question for everyone in Europe today and in California as well. Um, uh, the alcohol is higher. It's true, um, but it's a question of balance. The two wines we, we, we just tasted uh, at the end, <coughs> sorry, um, 16 and 17, the level of alcohol is between 14 and 14.5, 14 um, which is quite high, but it's not burning. 
um, you have the flesh, you have the acidity, you have the tannins to allow the, the and you need that, that alcohol because the alcohol brings a, a certain suavity and a, 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 a certain, um, it will sound a little strange, but it's almost like oil, you know, it wraps the, the, uh, the wine, but it doesn't burn. And that's, that's extremely important. Um, the, the, um, uh, um, it's, it's again our, our, our job. The big impact of, of the alcohol uh, um, is more than uh, uh, being a problem in the balance of the wine. If you have, of course, the wine that can take, that, that can take it, um, and you can handle that with the size of the crop, with the date of the harvest, etc. But the biggest impact, it's on the aging. When I say aging, it's the, uh, uh, the raising, the education in the barrel. Because the, the, the use of the barrel, which is extremely important because uh, in French, we say élevage in barrel. Um, élevage in barrel is, which we don't translate as, as aging. Aging is vieillissement. We age in bottle. We don't age in, the wine doesn't age in barrel. We don't age at, t at, at the age of uh, when we are teenagers. We age when we are adults. It's the same thing for wine. So the barrel, it's, it's, the, it's, 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 it's what we use to educate, to raise the wine, to raise one's kid, to raise its quality, to make it better, to make it smoother, more integrated, more complex. That's the role of the barrel. The role of the barrel is not to tattoo uh, vanilla notes on your wine. You don't, that's not interesting. It's not to add tannins. The tannins of the oak are square. It's not good. It's, it, it, that's the, the, the tannins that, that Pot Young uh, describes as, as, as the vacuum cleaner tannins. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's unpleasant. So the alcohol accelerates the, age, the, the extraction of the elements of the wood that we don't necessarily want. So we had to shrink, we had to diminish, uh, to, yes, to shrink uh, uh, the, the time in, in barrel. Uh, and the aging now, instead of being 16, 18 months, is more between 12 and 14 months. And that's in order not to dry the wine. Um, that's the first uh, impact. And the other impact is we use more new oak barrel. And again, the new oak is not for the toastiness and etc. that we get rid of by rinsing the barrels before, being, before using them with water. A lot of rinsing, uh, 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 spraying the inside of the barrel to remove all these elements that we don't want. Toastiness, it's for breakfast for me. It's, it's not in the glass of wine. Uh, um, the, the vanilla, it's for dessert. It's not in a glass of wine. Uh, so we remove all these elements. Um, uh, so, but we need more new oak barrel because barrels which are, uh, uh, which are one year old or two years old have a tendency, uh, have been dried already by the previous wine that, that aged into it. And therefore we dry the wine faster. Uh, uh, so and 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 we don't want uh, um, and 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 we don't want that, um, which is uh, uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, uh, I, I I totally agree. No one mentioned it, and and there is no taste of that. Um, and so the, the, that will be for me today the highest impact of of uh, of alcohol. But right now we can manage. 14, 14.5, the wines are rich enough to, to, to take that. <coughs> if it gets higher, it will, be, it will be more complicated. But it's more in the viticulture uh, technique that we will change that by just by changing the, the grape variety. Changing the, the grape variety, it's, it's, the easy, uh, it's, the, it's the easy solution, which will change completely the style of your wine, which... I don't feel I have the right to do that. Voila. Well, thank you very much, Roger. Yes. Oak, oak is key, but it's not a tattoo. And, and the fruit, the fruit is, you, you, the 2020, 
which is uh, which is the, the new vintage. I, I just tasted again yesterday morning a few tanks uh, from 20, which have, have finished their malolactic fermentation. And the fruit, the primary and secondary fruit, it's fascinating. Um, we, the description for 2020, uh, um, it's fruit baskets. It's exotic, it's black fruit, it's red fruit, it's, uh, 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 it's almost mango, uh, uh, but the good mangoes you have in your part of the world, not the, the crappy mangoes that age in transportation that we have. Uh, um, it's, uh, it, it, it's a fascinating uh, vintage for that. The wines will be beautiful, uh, um, but and we're lucky. We're lucky in, in Bordeaux. To be honest, so far in the last ten years, Bordeaux took advantage of the global warming uh, um, because we more, more than ever we have rich maturity, uh, uh, and 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 therefore we we have been producing much better wines than 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 before. Um, but. Uh, um, these wines compared to riper vintages. Um, so, um, 2017, uh, uh, as you can see, slightly lighter. It's rich, it's, it's not, not rich, it's uh, 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 vibrant on the attack, but it, it, uh, uh, when, when it breathes, it, it doesn't develop the, that, that core that, that the, 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 the 16 has, that the 15 have. 15 Béamonange is magnificent. And the 10, 9 and 10. 9 is, is very sexy, uh, you see. It, it's luscious. Um, 2010, it's a little more serious. I'm drinking a lot of 10 at the moment. Uh, um, that's that's the, the, the vintage I'm serving at, at home when people come, um, and uh, uh, I, I love the tents today. I would I would enjoy serving older Bella Monange, but uh, um, I, I uh, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, I, I would enjoy uh, uh, um, serving older Bella Monange, but we don't have any older vintages. Patience again is is key. Um, but uh, uh, these are wines which, which age tremendously well. Um, and, and we have the proof with those very, very old Bel Air that, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm serving uh, from time to time. Um, so uh, um, the, the, I, I'm, I'm not worried at all with, 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 with the aging. Um, what, whatever the, 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 the richness of, of the vintage. Uh, but 19, it's still a, a, little, a little early to say. I tasted 19 last week, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the blend which is still in barrel at the, at the moment and will be uh, until the bottling in June. Um, the 19s are very complex, probably more precise, more, there's more tension in 19 than in the, than in the 16. Um, but you, you, you don't have the, you, you, you don't have that, that richness even in, in, in fruits. Um, the, the 2018, which has just been bottled in June, uh, um, which I tasted two weeks ago, is still a little bit under a, 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 a bottle shock. Um, but, but 18, we consider 18, my father consider 18, it, it was, uh, um, it was it's, it's 49, his 49th uh, vintage, um, and uh, um, he considers 18 as the greatest vintage of his career. Um, and, and it's true that um, 18, it has everything all the, other, all the other great vintages have. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating wine that will deserve to age because yes, it will be approachable quite young because that's the way we, we, we approach the wines today. Uh, uh, however, uh, it will gain so much, so much. As I said, you know, on the completely different wines last night, I, 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 I drank a, a, a Dot Dominus 2002. I didn't really like the, Domin the Dominus 2002 when they were born because I found them too violent where I truly enjoyed the O1s, which, are, which were very elegant. Today, the O2 is above O1. As much as I still enjoy O1, it hasn't reached that level of complexity that the O2 has today. Um, and Belair Monange, it, it's the same thing. Those vintages, those beautiful, generous, broad vintages, uh, um, they, in, in 15 years, in 20 years, uh, uh, they, they, they will bring so much more to the table. But it's, it's all about patience. The great thing is today we have the choice. Before we didn't have the choice because in their youth, 
they were a little complicated, I must admit. Wines in general from Bordeaux, the tannins were not perfectly ripe. Um, and so you had to wait for the tertiary aromas to fully develop those truffle notes, uh, 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 cigar box, uh, 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 which, which then would wrap the slight angle in the tannins, which was not that pretty. Do we have Robert Parker to thank? We, we do. I, 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 as I said before, I have a huge admiration for him because even if he has forced many people to go too far, uh, it, I mean, he didn't force anyone. It's people who went too far in order to please him uh, uh, because he never gave any, any winemaking advice. He never said, I'm a winemaker, you should do this or that. Uh, um, but people, in order to please him, went very far and too far. Now many of them are coming back, which is great. It's good news. Uh, um, but but he, has, he has forced everyone to, to understand better our wines, to, to get out of our comfort uh, zone. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that it's when you get out of your comfort zone that, that you reach almost greatness if, if the terroir allows you to. So, Any Anything uh, else that you would like to share with us? Any interesting technical knowledge? I have a challenge for you. You keep talking about the beauty of this vintage and that vintage. What is your worst vintage in recent years? What, what's the vintage that you, you're not proud of? Um, well, the, when we're not proud of a wine, we don't produce it. Um, so 2013 was an extremely challenging vintage because it rained all the time. So ripeness of tannins was difficult, almost impossible to reach, and fruitiness was almost impossible to, uh, to get. Um, so we had to be even more uh, uh, severe in the vineyard, nonstop. We dropped fruits almost every day. You, we, you would have a vine with, at the beginning, 10 clusters. At the, the time of the harvest, we were down to three or four, just to help the vine get a little bit of concentration in, in, into that fruit. And when it didn't work, we didn't produce. Um, so uh, there's no Ozana, for example, 2013. It was not convincing. We decided to jump. There is no Espérance de Trotanois 13. Not great. Uh, there is no Annonce 13. I could have produced Annonce 13. Decided not to. Not Oro Blancan 13. Decided not to. Everything declassified into generic wines. And uh, the wines were good enough to actually make good generic wines at the time, which have been drunk uh, and long gone. Um, so, uh, um, so, so that's our approach. Uh, we are very lucky to be in a position where if we don't have to, we can not uh, produce. Um, and we do that in California as well. There is no Dominus 2000 and, uh, 1993. We didn't like the wine, didn't produce. Um, so uh, uh, um, I, I, I was not proud of those wines because we did not succeed, that's for sure. But we did not release them. And uh, the, the, the wines that we released were a better expression of, of those vintages. Uh, Belair Monange 13 uh, is actually a good wine. It's not a great wine. I will never claim that uh, uh, because it was not a great vintage, but it's a good wine. And it's a wine that is interesting. Um, I tasted, it's funny because there's, there's a, a good friend, uh, uh, um, thank you very much. There, there is a good friend of, of ours, a producer in, in the Medoc that organized a, a tasting of, of 13 and 14, completely blind with uh, different people, uh, technicians. And, um, and, and, and some ones in uh, some 13s, they actually thought it was 14s, you know. Um, so th there are some good successes within the conditions. But the most challenging vintage for me the, in the recent years was clearly 2013, clearly, clearly. Um, uh, um, but uh, when, 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 we, when we failed, we didn't produce. That's the key. And that's where, again, you, you have to put your ego elsewhere. Uh, uh, you, you can't put your ego in front of the bottle. It has to be behind. You have to put your ego in the, in, in, in the, in the potential failure and be honest enough with yourself to say, I failed, I don't release, I don't produce. 
So what did you do um, for the Grand One in the 2013 vintage to mitigate those challenges? What do you do in the winery or, or during harvest? Concentration in the vineyard. As I said, we left fewer clusters for the vine could to concentrate on those few clusters. Um, and and, and, and the, the, the little sun that we had uh, through the photosynthesis to, to reach a, a good level of maturity. And then uh, in, in the cellar, extremely light extractions, uh, um, just to get the superficial element that, 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 was, that, that was pleasant. Uh, um, uh, but at the same time, I mentioned the sorting table earlier on, and I said we remove one to three percent of the fruit. At, on the sorting table in thirteen, we removed fourteen percent of the fruit. There's fourteen percent of the of, of the entire crop. It's massive. You can imagine uh, um, that 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 did not even see the tank. Um, so extreme sorting in a sense. You just keep what's what's best. You concentrate on that. You go lightly on the extraction. Uh, um, you remain humble and 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 you try to to build a wine that is uh, uh, that is pretty uh, uh, that will give a, a certain amount of pleasure. But don't fool yourself. It's not great wines. It's good wines. It's good wines, but it's not great. Just make the most out of what the vintage presented. Exactly. Exactly. And if you failed, be honest enough with yourself to admit it. There's nothing wrong with failing. It's only the people who don't try anything that don't fail. Okay. So you have to be, to be honest enough with yourself for that. Okay. So Matthew asked a question. If you're yes. not drinking your own wines, ah. what wines are you drinking? We want to know so we can buy your competitors' wines. <laughs> no, um, I, I'm uh, I'm drinking a lot of my wines. Uh, uh, first of all, because I, I I drink a lot, so I can I can't afford to 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 buy many other people's wines uh, and and keep the pace of of of, of, of consumption that I have. Um, but um, when I'm at home, it, it's in my cellar. I have a, a lot of wines from our neighbors. I, I mentioned Fijac earlier on, which is a wine I, I absolutely adore. Uh, uh, Conseillant, Vieux Sertan, uh, Cheval Blanc are wines that I, I find absolutely fantastic. In the Medoc, same thing. I'm a, a, a huge fan. On, 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 in restaurants, I, I usually drink only Medoc wines. Uh, um, and, and the, the Pichon Comtesse, uh, the, the style of the wines, I truly enjoy uh, 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 um, in a slightly in a lower category. I, I, Giscourt, Claude du Marquis are fantastic wines for me. So I, I drink at home a lot of my wines because it allows me to understand them better. Uh, as I said earlier on, uh, uh, or throughout the tasting, uh, last week I tasted that, like two weeks ago I tasted that. We taste in the office, I take the bottle home and then I see how it drinks. Because tasting is not the, the most important, it's the drinking. And sometimes in the tasting, when we dissect the wine, we are extremely severe. And as soon as I have that bottle at home, after three, four, five, six hours of, 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 of breathing in the bottle, uh, um, the wine is very good or the wine collapsed. Uh, you know, so it's 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 important. Um, but but then as soon as I travel, I'm extremely open-minded, and I I don't want to drink my wines when I travel because that's when you have access to 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 that massive world which is which is out there, whether it's it's French or or or, or non-French. Um, I, so far, I, so far, you only mentioned Bordeaux wines. No, no, I know. But that's what I drink here. That's what I drink when, when I'm here. Um, and it's there, you know, it's, it's so easy. When I go to Burgundy, I don't ask for a, for a Bordeaux bottle. Uh, uh, there's none anyway. Um, the, the, so uh, the, the, I, I, I enjoy, a, I mean, mainly white Burgundy. The red Burgundies are very good, but honestly, I, I, they're quite unapproachable for many of them uh, and very hard to find, very, very, it's so rare. A lot of them go to Asia, which is great for you. Uh, in France, we no, have- No, to China, not to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but but it's uh, 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 I, I'm lucky to be served those great wines when I travel. But it, you you can hardly find them in France. It's uh, uh, it's extremely difficult. Um, but but it's true. As soon as I have an opportunity, there there are fantastic wines. I used to drink a lot of Italian wines. Lately, I drink less. Uh, but it's more a question of opportunity than than anything else. Um, and when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, sort of further away wines, um, I, I have quite a few old Australian wines that I, I, I drink from time to time. Um, I, I, but I like to age them. Uh, um, uh, I, I, I find those wines don't age enough uh, uh, and, and I, I want to be as patient as possible. It's the same thing with Californian wines. I mean, uh, of course, I don't count Dominus. Uh, um, the, the, uh, um, the, 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 the Italian, the, the, the American wines, I like to age them also because they have a, a huge potential uh, uh, for, for, for ageability. You drink the, 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 the old uh, Napa from, from the, the 70s uh, are fascinating wines. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very open-minded. Uh, I, I will drink more Italian wines. It, it's a question of, of opportunity to, uh, to, to be honest, but uh, I, I will drink more of, of them. I, um, we, you, you know, you are extremely lucky because you you are not taken into a style. I, I, I have to be open minded, but I have to always remind myself that I am in a, in a spot and I need to express that spot and to express that spot as as well as I can. Um, I need to breathe and drink that, that, that area. You see what I mean? It's a question of training. Uh, um, I don't want to compare myself to, to a sports person, but uh, uh, if, you know, uh, Usain Bolt, uh, he didn't run uh, the fastest in the world uh, uh, by, uh, by playing the piano all the time. Uh, uh, he, he, he won by training, by running, 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 running. And it's the same thing for us as producers, and it's true around the world. Uh, uh, we need to be fully uh, uh, um, uh, occupied by where we are in order to get better and better and better in what we do. As much as I love drinking Pinot Noir, whether it's Burgundy or Oregon, um, I'm never going to make a Pinot Noir in Bordeaux because I'm not uh, in, in those areas. You know, I, you don't want to drink a Pinot Noir from Bordeaux. Um, so my, my curiosity is there. That's, that's my hobby. That's, that's, uh, that's when I'm not walking. But when I'm walking, which means when I'm here, uh, I, I need to concentrate on, I need to train nonstop, you see. Okay, Edward, we have um, two final questions. The first, yes. how would you describe the different vineyards in the different regions? Uh, Napa, Pomerol, and saint Amion. Uh, our vineyards? Um, well, uh, the, the, the one thing in common they have, apart from us, is the drinkability, whatever the age. But Dominus and Ulysses, which are our two vineyards in Napa, are highly dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon. So there are wines which express both the beautiful weather we have in Napa, that those very warm days and, 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 and cool nights, and therefore you have the, the richness of, of, of the, the fruit, the, almost the, ex, the exuberancy of, 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 of the Napa fruit, with the depth that is brought by, by the, the, the cool nights. Um, the, the, so that's, that, that would be the, the style of Dominus. And with the aging after 10, 15, 20 years, and Ulysses, uh, uh, they, they will come together, they will find their balance and be honestly more, more intellectual than physical. But in, in the first part of their life, they are very physical wines. Um, in Pomerol, it's pure charm. It's those beautiful gravels uh, mixed with, with clay, uh, um, with mainly Merlot uh, planted on, on, on them, some very old vines as well. So you have, you have that lusciousness that I mentioned. O9 for me is, the, is, is, is a pure Pomerol vintage. There's fantastic wines elsewhere, but it, it was made for Pomerol. It's 
it's so generous it's so soft yet long yet complex and there's it's it's seamless you know there's no angles uh, um and 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 that's pomerol that's the style of of pomerol with more or less complexity depending on the on the on the, on the vineyard um and and then saint emilion it's the minerality and the tension you have that that generosity but you have that tension and that freshness. And therefore it makes the wine, as much as I hate that expression because it can be taken in the wrong way, it makes the wine uh, more intellectual, less, uh, 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 less physical. And I don't mean intellectual in a pretentious way. Uh, uh, I'm not a poet, uh, I'm, a, I'm a wine producer uh, and that's more than enough. Uh, uh, but uh, um, it, it, it it ticks boxes uh, uh, that will make you dream, you see? Uh, and, and, and for me, that's, that will be the definition of this great vineyard of Bella Monange. And I fully, I, I've, been, I've been living on the property 24 seven for eight years. We've, been, we've, we've had uh, that full property now since 12 years. And every day I'm, 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 I'm more amazed by, by the, the potential of, of this property. And again, it has nothing to do with, with, with me or us or, or even my kids or the people that will come after me. Maybe the, it will not be in our family, but that vineyard will remain. And that's the most important thing. Okay, thank you very much. We have the final question because you, okay. mentioned, you mentioned Pichon Comtes, right? One of your favorite wines. Yes. So, yeah, so it seems like that the question says that it seems like you you only own entirely right bank, uh, uh, chateau vineyards. I can't afford so, the left bank chateaus. Can't afford. That's your answer. Okay. Yeah, it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'd love to have a vineyard on the left bank, but it's it's unapproachable for for us, and and they do a great job, so they don't need us. Is it because of a supply issue? You you are unable to find any vineyards in in the left bank. Well, it's it's uh, um, you know we we are we are farmers. Uh, we are local farmers, and and everything we have is is in the vineyard. We are not big insurance companies or big luxury brands that uh, uh, can afford a, a hobby, and so we are fighting against those uh, those companies that invest uh, heavily in, in, uh, in our vineyards um, and I cannot fight those people. Um, the, the, um, so the way we develop our, our, ourselves is by being here. You see, I had dinner yesterday with a couple that comes from the industrial world and has a vineyard in Saint-Emilion. Um, it's a great hobby for, for them. They take it very seriously. They do a great job, but it's a hobby. Uh, we call that in French leur danseuse, you know. Um, uh, for, for me, it's, it's, it's everything but a danseuse. And, and the husband was telling me, oh, you live in Saint-Emilion, how brave of you. I was like, well, yes, but where else should I live? I, 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 I make wine, you know, that's, that's my job. So I need to be here to, 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 to do my job as, as best as I can. Um, and so it's a different philosophy. And so the way for us to develop is to be here and it's to, is to identify the parcel that those people don't really care about because it's not renowned, uh, uh, but we can, we can see the potential. And then with our know-how in the vineyard and in the cellar, we can try to express that potential. Um, uh, uh, where for all those beautiful, uh, well-known and already extremely well-produced wines and uh, uh, whether it's in the Medoc or, or, or on the right bank, um, it's those people that, that will come and buy the, the you know, Bernard Arnault, uh, LVMH, when he buys a vineyard, he doesn't buy it for the potential. Uh, he goes for Cheval Blanc. There's no risk to be taken. When you buy a, a piece of art, uh, you have a choice. You, you, either you have an uh, uh, unlimited means and you buy a piece from Francis Bacon uh, um, or you have extremely limited means and, and you will try to, to, to discover um, the new hotshot uh, the for the next 10 years, um, but that, that is still accessible. That's the way we, we, we function. Uh, uh, we, look, we look for the, the, the next hotshot. I wish I was a farmer like you then. <laughs> okay, I think um, 
Yeah, that's about all the questions. Yes, and uh, Caroline has also agreed with you. Stay in Santa Mion, do all the good things in Santa Mion. Uh, any last words, Edward? I think Melissa, there's a there's a last slide. Final well, slide. The the the, the last fold yeah. is just take pleasure in in drinking wine and believe in in your own taste. If someone tells you it's a great wine and you don't like it, you don't have to go for it. Trust in your taste. Uh, um, and, and, and aim for pleasure. Uh, life is tough enough, and especially in, 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 in this period. Uh, um, so use wine just for, for traveling uh, without, without leaving the table. I, I can assure you that's what I do, and uh, I travel tremendously. I, I'm thrilled to have been in Singapore for an hour and a half. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great honor for me. Thank you so much for enjoying wines. We are nothing without you. Uh, um, and uh, and, and uh, so please don't, don't hesitate to, to even let us know if there's something that you, you don't like about our wines so we can try to, 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 to get better. Um, but, but you can be sure that our aim every day when we get up, whether it's my father, whether it's myself, uh, um, our aim is to is to produce the best possible wine for you to have the most the, the most pleasure. So, I, I I hope it works from time to time. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Edward. I just want to emphasize to the participants that it is not easy to get Edward on a virtual tasting session. So it is an honor for all of us, and I'm sure this is and for me as well. It was extremely informative and enriching. I'm sorry that we overrun, but I am sure majority of us enjoyed the session as much as I do. Thank you so much, Edward. And uh, yeah, so the last slide from Crystal Wines, as usual, if you enjoy the session, follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, so you can receive all our upcoming virtual masterclasses. Uh, this year, the this particular virtual tasting session will be the final one. So look forward to next year's. Hopefully we have more upcoming ones. And of course, if you enjoy the wines today, they are available for purchase uh, on special offer for just two weeks. Uh, visit our website at crystalwines.com to purchase. And if you have any feedback at all about our virtual classes, anything we can improve on or if you just want to compliment us feel free to do, do so email us at marketing at crystalwines.com thank you very much uh, this is a two-hour session it doesn't feel like two hours to be honest Edward. very great session hope to meet you soon after the cold covid situation you know, has eased so thank you everyone and uh, you. feel free yeah, to leave the session we will just stay here because we do not want to give you an abrupt, yeah, just, we, we don't want to leave abruptly. So feel free to yeah, leave the session at your own pace. And thank you and bye everyone. Thank See you, you very much. Later. Thank you, Edward. Bye, bye Thank you. Thank you.